In this video today, I'm going to go over how to take items you've created in Google Drive, such as documents, uh, spreadsheets, presentations, that you have that you want your students to either view or to be able to edit. Let me show you what I've already done to set up for it. I've already created my document, and I'm going to go in here, and this is the document that I've created. And it looks just like a worksheet. You can upload worksheets you already have to your drive and, and to take it online. I've also already created a blog post. I've begun the process here of creating this post. I've begun it by t putting in the first couple of steps I want them to do. I've got a, I've embedded a video that I've shown in a different video. And then here I'm going to have them start their practice problems. So going back to our document. Now we've got it and what do we do? We have to share it. So we click on share and normally you can sit here. Anyone with the link can view it. It may be private when it starts off or people inside your district. I'm going to say anyone with the link and then can view, you can make can comment or can edit. I caution you on using can edit because that means every time someone opens it, they may change what's in there and it won't take long if you if they're practice problems, it will not take long for them to, to get altered. Then you click save. This link, you need to copy it and then you can use that. You're, you're pretty much finished in here. You go over to your blog post or your website and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say begin the practice problems. I'm going to turn that into a link to this document. So I'm just going to paste that in there. And then if I'm through, assuming I'm through with this, I'm going to hit publish or update because I'm editing one that I've already started in the past. And now my blog post is ready to go. If I go over and view my blog, they can see there it's ready to go and there's the video and then it's got a link to the practice problems. I've already prepared in another web browser. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste that link. And this is what it looks like when someone else, either if they're logged in, their name will be here. Of course, if they're not logged in, then they're just viewing it because that's what they're allowed to do. For our purposes, we're going to want them logged in for what we're going to do next. They can't edit it. I'm trying to click on there. I can't edit it. But I can come under File and make a copy. And this is where... Uh, you can assign them some set format. Maybe you want them to put their initials or you want them to put the, a number you've assigned to them. That way you can tell who it is later. Either way, this now gets them a copy in their own drive. And now they can edit this. Once their copy is loaded, they can now start working it. They can insert. Uh, they can start typing. Right, either write out their formula, begin the process of, of solving this set of problems or responding to whatever questions you are you have given them another thing they can do just like you shared the document they can share it if you have them working in collaborative groups they can invite other people and they can use their email addresses and they can invite other people who can edit it and maybe you've told them set a key that you have three people working together each one uses a different color that way you can tell which person has done what in the in the document later on I'll show you also in that you can track the changes each one makes so you can actually see what contributions they make regardless of what colors they set on there so it's a very powerful tool to turn it collaborative another great thing about this process is that I have heard of people they have access to this all the time some students that maybe have it on their phone they have the Google Drive app on their phone they're able to open it and work on their work while traveling to a field trip or to a sporting event they're able to view notes that you've put there, view copies of your presentations. That way they have it there with them at all times. Anywhere they have network access, essentially, they'll have a copy of this and can work on this. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at how to turn your Google Drive creations and documents and presentations into interactive tools for your students to use.